uh, now it's mixed mitral valve disease and uh, it's it's same in description and uh, in differentials and presentation like as I yesterday explained mixed mit uh, aortic valve disease like in mixed mitral valve disease you can find overlapping signs of mitral stenosis and mitral regurgitation and uh, then you have to decide uh, out of these uh, multiple murmurs diastolic murmur and pansystolic murmur or there may be murmur of tricuspid regurgitation if there is pulmonary hypertension so out of these multiple murmurs you have to come uh, with a uh, correct diagnosis and uh, and, then, uh, and you have to come out with an appropriate differential and diagnosis do not be confused while uh, telling the diagnosis as I have explained yesterday be confident while presenting your findings once decide what is your diagnosis and then don't stray away from it ok stick to it whatever is the diagnosis whether examiners are confronting you or not you do not confront with the examiner but if examiner are asking you are you sure then you should be sure ok because examiner will even if you are not sure in your heart uh, with your tongue you have to say you are sure ok because in this way they are checking your confidence level also and uh, your grip on the picking up of clinical findings and one thing more once uh, when you have finished your examination they will not let you to examine uh, the patient again so you cannot examine sometimes they their self they ask candidate ok you can check again and tell but this is uh, not always this is uh, rare ok so once you have finished your examination you will not uh, be allowed to re-examine the patient so whatever you have got be confident over it make the one diagnosis and present ok so in mixed mitral valve disease same you can find findings of mitral stenosis as irregular irregular pulse low volume pulse and uh, in apex beat could be tapping in character undisplaced and there could be mid diastolic murmur at the apex ok loud in the expiration in the left lateral position or there could be signs of mitral regurgitation like there could be regularly regular pulse there could be high volume pulse apex beat could be displaced and thrusting in character and uh, there could be pansystolic murmur in the apex which radiates to the axilla there could be systolic thrill and uh, also there is difference of heart sound like uh, when mitral steno with the mitral stenosis usually first heart sound is loud while with the mitral regurgitation first heart sound is soft so you should be able to differentiate between heart sounds also S1 and S2 please try to listen it many times this is important you should be able to differentiate when it is loud and when it is not loud this is important uh, I know this is a bit difficult but this is not very difficult when you will start examining when you will listen many times then with confidence you will be able to differentiate when the, uh, about first and second heart sound when it is loud when it is not loud ok uh, because uh, in the pulmonary hypertension pulmonary component of the second heart sound is loud so if you will be knowing then you can identify that P2 is loud and uh, that can be identified I don't say very easily but I think so with uh, if I say with appropriate uh, appropriate appropriate easiness <laughs> you can uh, different you can pick loud P2 ok so this is important please try to listen it many times S1 S2 loud P2 when, so it will help you many times so when you find uh, findings of uh, diastolic murmur, regurgitation murmur, uh, systolic murmur and findings of overlapping so you will say that patient is having mixed mitral valve disease but examiner wants to listen which uh, uh, which pathology is dominant like mitral stenosis is dominant or mitral regurgitation is dominant ok so how you will differentiate how you will say as I explained yesterday in the mixed aortic valve disease you have to concentrate on the pulse and apex beat if pulse and apex beat is of correct is characteristic of mitral stenosis then you will say predominant lesion is mitral stenosis 
and if pulse and apex beat is characteristic of uh, along with heart sounds is characteristic of mitral regurgitation then you will say patient is a predominant lesion is mitral regurgitation and in both cases you will find both murmurs in the precordium you will find diastolic murmur as well as pansystolic murmur but you which which lesion is dominant this you will decide on the basis of apex beat pulse and heart sounds okay so uh, this is important and uh, these were the important things and uh, one one thing more i tell you when you are confused you are not sure like you are finding loud first heart sound which is characteristic of mitral stenosis also you are find you are finding displaced apex beat which is characteristic of mitral regurgitation so signs are overlapping each other so in this setting how you will say and how you will justify your diagnosis that which pathology which pathology is predominant mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation and in this case you can save yourself by saying that sir you can say to the examiner that sir i would like to do echocardiography or cardiac catheterization to know uh, which lesion patient is having then i will know my diagnosis exactly so it will save you always try to justify yourself you should you should know how to justify your diagnosis when you tell your diagnosis you should have uh, two three points to support your diagnosis okay this is important so this was all about mixed mitral valve disease i hope this is clear if any question then you can ask please like share and subscribe my youtube channel for more videos thank you